is Chandler Moore Sanders um, and I am with Moore Wellness Studio. Uh, today I'm going to take you through a mat work exercise uh, incorporating the foam roller. And if you have any small uh, hand weights, anything less than five pounds would be appropriate for this workout. Anything, any household item you might have um, would work really well here. Um, this is an excellent workout if you are someone that is hypermobile in your joints. Uh, this is a really great way uh, to kind of find some stability. So, um, what we're going to do is start with this. You're going to lie down on this from head to tail. So that can be the most awkward part, is just getting yourself situated where it is running the length of your spine, right like so. And immediately you will find um, that you're having to work your balance and your stability, and that's kind of the point. So, um, also by the way, if you don't have any weights, you don't have to use them at any point here. Uh, they're just an option. So, <clears throat> immediately think about finding your weight in the core, in the spine, that is in contact with the roller. So, you should feel a good amount of weight through the pelvis and the sacrum. You've got a little space here in your low back. That's going to be a little bit different for everyone depending on the shape of your spine, but you should, not, you should have a lumbar curve here, so you're not bearing weight in the low back. And then you start to gain a find weight again through the back of the ribs and the shoulder girdle here. You feel the spines of the scapula kind of hug the roller. And then a space behind the neck. And then again, weight in the skull. So that's just kind of a really nice way to start with knowing where your alignment is in space. That way, whenever we take this shape, we want to strengthen it and become more aware of it here so that whenever you are vertical against gravity, that shape is better supported. So with that in mind, we're just going to start with some breath work. So hands can rest here on top of your abdomen. That sometimes is a helpful place or even around the sides of your ribs. So you really feel the diaphragm moving. So inhaling, like a three-dimensional balloon, feel, feel to the back, the sides, and the front of the ribs. And then as you exhale, feel how the rib cage wraps around and hugs your internal organs. Pull the pit of the belly up and in, but not changing the shape of your low back. You want to maintain the shape of your spine. Again, inhale, fill that three-dimensional space to the front, to the sides, to the back. And then exhale, the ribs wrap around, that low abdominal wall compresses in towards your internal organs. Again, inhale, exhale, really pulling in that oxygen to nourish the blood so it can help fire through the muscle. And again, one last. And exhale. And then let's bring some awareness on that exhale to the flexion of your lumbar spine. So take a breath in as you exhale. You want to shorten the space between your hips and your ribs, which flattens the low back into the roller. And then actively release back to a neutral spine. Try to keep your legs and your glutes really quiet here and make the abdominal wall responsible for curling the tail under. So you're compressing the lumbar, the low abdominal wall, so that the lumbar spine pushes into the roller. And then actively return to your neutral. Just a few more here. Compressing the lumbar spine down to the roller, just a little tilt of the pelvis. So you, your pubic bone is going to come up as your hip bones sink, and then your hips are going to come up as the pubic bone rotates back down away from you. So you're lengthening from sternum to pubic bone and then shortening from sternum to pubic bone. One last time here, and then we'll bring some awareness now up through the shoulder blades. So go ahead, if you have your weights, grab them. If not, that's okay too. You're just gonna bring the arms up toward the ceiling and we're gonna start with an internal and external rotation. So taking the thumbs all the way out and around, feel that internal rotation of the upper arm bone and then other direction, external rotation of that upper arm bone. So you see the movement in the hand. It's really big and obvious. But you want it to initiate all the way up where the arm attaches to your core. So it's all the way up in that 
very first joint. And then you see it through the elbow and the wrist. Just a few more each direction. Keep your breath moving. I don't really mind so much when you're inhaling and exhaling. I just don't want you to hold your breath. And then finding your neutral position here, we're just gonna do a little protraction and retraction. So reach the scapula bones away from one another so the arms come up to the ceiling. And then plug those upper arms back and into the shoulder socket. So you feel that hugging sensation of the shoulder blades on the roller. Again, reaching it up and then plug the upper arms down and into the shoulder socket. So the arms stay the same distance apart. You don't want to collapse the arms inward. You want to keep that relative shoulder distance apart the whole time. Letting the scapula bone glide in and out on the back of the ribs. One last, and then neutralize the shoulder blade. Let the arms rest down here to your sides. Once again, you're going to elevate the scapula bone to the earlobes and then reverse that direction. So elevate the scapula bone and then depress the scapula bone. Up and down. This is kind of like a vertical movement up and down the back of the ribs. One more time here. It's really exploring all the range of motion that your shoulder possesses. It's your most mobile joint in the body. So you want to get blood flow to all those nooks and crannies. And then from here, just let your arms, your forearms fall back and then your shoulders open. So you're kind of making a goal post here. This is a really nice way to stretch through the chest and the front of the heart and all those little intrinsic muscles, those intercostal muscles that hold your ribs together. You could straighten the arms out here. This gets a little bit more into the biceps as well as the pecs. And then if you like that goalpost position, you can pull the elbows down and around to the side body and then let the fingertips float up and overhead. It's kind of like, like a modified snow angel or a snow angel with bent elbows. Don't forget to, that breath work here is still important. It's still helping you pull in the pit of the belly so that your balance is maintained against the movement of the arm. And then go ahead and grab your weight here once again. You could do all of that with the weights as well. It's just a little bit more precarious. And since we're still kind of early in the workout, your shoulder joint may not quite be ready for that. But so with that in mind now, arms again back up to the ceiling, soft in the joints. You want to stay soft in your elbows. You're going to allow the arms to open out to the side, just to a hover in line with the body. Feel that width across the heart and then float the arms back up over the shoulders. And then again, open the arms out wide and then pull the arms back up over the shoulders. If you're starting to feel more comfortable here, if you've gotten a little bit more confident with your balance, then think about bringing the feet a little closer together as you open and close the arms. Challenge your balance. You want to kind of stay on the edge where it's always a little bit of work to maintain your balance. And if it, that doesn't work, just widen the feet back out. One more time here and pause. Now one arm at a time is going to open out to the side. Try not to counterbalance with the legs. The opposite oblique is going to have to work here to help you maintain your stability. And then alternating sides. Take your time. There's no rush and no hurry here. Opposite side waist is helping you to stabilize as the weight of the arms comes out to the side. And again, just the leverage of your arm weight alone is going to give you some workload here. So you don't, if you don't have the weights, don't feel like you're missing out on anything. One more time, each side. Try to keep even weight through the feet. There might, might be some wiggle wobble happen and that's fine. Pause here. Now one arm is gonna come back overhead and then up. I'm kind of mixing and matching some of my variations here. Be careful how far the arm comes back overhead. You want to make sure you're really plugging that arm into the shoulder socket and then let the arm come back. So 
So your space between your shoulder and your earlobe is still really long. Your neck is easy, your face is easy, you're not taking tension into the brow. Try to keep the muscles of the face nice and soft. One more time here, each side. And then now both arms together. Just like we went out to the side with both arms together, now both arms are gonna travel back. Watch the rib cage connection here. You don't want to allow the ribs to flare up away from the roller. Really anchor down in the back of the ribs and only let your arms go back as far as you can maintain that anchor. You want to really work the front of the core here. All the muscles of that abdominal wall compressing down and in, hugging those internal organs. The pit of my belly is really compressing down and in, but I'm still in my neutral spine in the low back. I still have that little breath of air in the lumbar spine. So now we're going to take both arms out to the side and then back up. Now both arms overhead and center. Out to the side and lift. Both arms overhead and center. And again, open wide center, overhead, and up. Just two more rounds here. Open wide, up, and over, up. Last two, wide, open, and overhead, and up. Now, one last variation here. One arm's going to come overhead, the other arm out to the side like you're drawing letter L, and then back up. Again, other side, one arm up overhead, the other arm out to the side, and up. Really stable in the joints, only letting your arms go as far as you can maintain your balance. This one feels very cheerleader to me. If I had pom-poms, I'd be doing some sort of pep rally cheer. One more time. When in doubt, just moving one arm overhead and one arm out to the side. This is a lot of, this can be a bit of choreography for some folks, so just keep that in mind, one thing at a time. And then now we'll bring both arms back up, and just to simplify a little bit, one arm overhead, the other arm down to your hip, up through center and switch. So you're just doing a big arm circle here. Once again, if you started to get a little bit more comfortable with your balance, start to walk your feet closer together. Keep using your breath. Soft in the elbows. Long neck. Soft in the face. One more time here, and then we'll bring both arms overhead. And now again, be mindful of your range of motion. Make sure you're moving only in a a range that feels comfortable to you. You want to push your boundary but not go beyond it. So arms are going to come overhead, sweep out and around, and back up through center. Again, overhead, sweep out and around, up through center. Just a few more revolutions this direction and then we'll reverse it. Around and then now arms down to the hips, around and up. Again, keeping that abdominal wall nice and contained, nice and connected, helping you maintain your stability. Around and up. One last time. Now, taking our focus to the lower half of the body, on this initially here, we're going to focus on keeping that neutral spine and the low back. Then we're going to float one leg up to a tabletop position. And just stabilize here for a moment. Think of the upper leg bone really plugging down and into the hip socket here and maintaining that stability of the low abdominal wall. Let that help uh, to support the leverage of the leg. You want to try not to just do all of the gripping with the hip flexor. 
Just steady there for a few more breath cycles and then lower that leg back home or home back down. Compress again the low abs. The other leg is going to float up and find that tabletop position. Let that upper leg bone plug it down and into the shoulder, into the hip socket here. Try not to let the hip flexor do all of the work. Make the low abdominal wall help support the weight of the leg. And then now we're going to just keep moving here in that exaggerated march. One leg at a time. And then if you'd like to rest your hands on top of your weights, that's a nice little added challenge. You don't have to do that one. You can just let the arms still rest to the sides. Really trying to make that transition from leg to leg as quiet as possible. So there's not a lot of moving around through your center as you move the legs. And one more time here, each side. Now we're going to float one leg up and pause. If you'd like, the other arm is going to come up, the opposite side. Doesn't have to come up all the way. Maybe it just stays at a hover right here. If you want to add the resistance of the weight, that's okay too. Bring it all the way up. So you've got a little progression to work with. You're really focused on that diagonal line of energy of the arm that's up to the ceiling or hovering that armpit across the body to the other side, over to that hip. And then now we'll send these limbs back down. Other leg floats up first. Stabilize there. Take a breath or two, and then either hover the opposite arm, bring the other arm all the way up, or if you've got, again, a little weight, bring the weight up with you. Opposite armpit to opposite hip. Keep that neutral spine for now. You want that little breath of air. Compress the low abdominals. And then we'll set these limbs back down. We take the paws out of the middle and then just start that exaggerated march once again. Using the breath here. Stay compressed in the low abdominals as you let the arm and leg move in opposition. Feel those ribs once again, hugging the internal organs. One more time here, and then we'll set the weights down to the side. Again, you can just roll them off, or you can let your palms rest on top. Either way, just depends on what you're using. So now this time, what you're going to do is connect here again in the front body, cinch the space between ribs and hips so that, the, again, the lumbar spine is flat to the roller, and we're going to bring one knee up into tabletop, float the other leg up into your tabletop and just steady here for a moment using your breath stabilize maintain that balance now let one leg float back down toward the mat but let it stop at just a hover and then we'll pull that leg back up other side floats down again just to a hover and then right back up keep pulling that pit of the belly in and now alternating from side to side. One leg and then the other. Using your breath, compressing the low abs. If this is too much, go back to that very first variation where you're starting from the floor and just lifting one leg back up. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're doing okay, keep this variation going. Reinvest energy to that low abdominal space Keep the lumbar spine nice and connected. One more time each side here, and then I'm going to add on one more progression. You choose if it's for you or not. Both knees connected, and then both legs together will float down toward the mat and then back up to tabletop. Use the breath to help you stabilize and lift. Use the breath. 
Try not to tense your face, your shoulders, or your neck. One last. And back up, and then we'll set both legs back down to the mat. Now, widen out to your degree. Hands are gonna come here behind the head. We're gonna inhale to lengthen the back of the neck, keeping the connection of the head to the mat or to the roller initially. And then exhale to lift. Take a breath in here. Compress the low abs, and then actively lower back down to the mat. Inhale, lengthen the back of the neck. Exhale. Try to maintain your neutral spine here where you've got that little breath of air. If you don't, if you lose it, that's okay. Lower back down. This isn't a huge range of motion. Inhale and exhale to come up. As you come up, really try to fold here at the ribs so that your eye gaze is coming forward and you're not letting your head lag behind like so. That's generally where the neck will start to fatigue and feel really uncomfortable. And release it back down. Inhale, tip the chin. Exhale to come back up. Inhale at the top and exhale, compress the abs to lower back down. Inhale, tip the chin. Exhale up. Take a breath and exhale to come back down. So make your lower just as active as your lift. Don't just give into gravity on the way back down. Make it an active length through the abdominals. We're gonna add on a little bit here. Inhale, exhale to come up. We're gonna stay here. You're gonna take a breath in and lift one arm up and back down. Exhale, lift. And down. Walk the feet together if you'd like. If you can maintain, challenge your balance. Exhale. And lower. And lower. Try to, again, keep that neutral spine. Use the breath. Compress the low abs. One more time here. Lower the arm and release. Take a breather. We're going to add on to a progression. If at any point the progression is too much, just go back to the previous variation that we were doing. Inhale, exhale to come up. This time both arms are going to lift and lower. Exhale, lift and lower. Using the breath, exhale, lift and lower. Two more here, lift. One last, pull the low abs in and release all the way back down. Inhale, exhale to come up. This time, try letting an arm come out to the side and then back to your hip. To the side, whoop, back to the hip. And again, side, hip. Just to your degree. Take your time. One last. Open. Back to center, hold, and release all the way down. Whew. Take a breather here. One more time here. We're just going to add on another variation. You choose if it's for you or not. Inhaling and exhale to come up. Both arms are going to travel wide and back to the hips. Open, back to the hips. Use the breath. Back to the hips. Open, close. Last two here. Just stay in line with the body. Stay soft in the joints and release down. One more time here, inhale, exhale to come up. This time, one arm up, one arm open, and back to center. One arm up, one arm open, and center. Keep using your breath. Feel that transition of stability in the obliques here as your arms are moving in space. 
Almost done. One more time. Really firing the upper fibers of the rectus abdominis and the obliques. Take a breath. Release it back down. One more progression here, I promise, and then we'll come off of the roller in this position. Inhaling, exhale to come up. Both arms float up, and both arms are going to open wide. Keep breathing. Use the exhale where you feel it's going to be more exertion here. So exhale as I lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale. Inhale, close. Last one. Inhale. And exhale back down. Very nice. Okay, so we'll set the weights off to the side for now. We're going to come off the side of the roller, and you're going to turn it now so that it is going to be perpendicular to the top of your mat, like so. And you're lying face down on the mat here. Now, if you have a really healthy low back and it doesn't give you any problems, you can probably do all of this um, hip width apart. Um, if your low back is tight like mine and it tends to be kind of creaky and cranky, uh, you might want to open the legs to mat width and turn your toes out. That'll give you a little more freedom and space in the low back. Uh, you're going to come all the way down to a low hover. Arms are reaching long, a little wider than shoulder width. And you're at a nice little low hover here. So we're going to go back to the very one of the things we did at the beginning of this class was elevation of the scapula and depression of the scapula. So the roller is going to go away from you as you elevate and pull back toward you as you depress. So just finding that range of motion once again. Think of putting a little bit of pressure into the pubic bone so that you're not dumping into your lumbar spine and pull the abs up away from the mat here. You're not relaxing the abs into the mat. They're really active. One more time. Pull the scapula again down the back. Keep engaging the upper spine. So you want the upper muscles of the spine to be working. Then push into the roller. It's going to roll toward the wrist as you come up into an extension. The entire posterior chain here is firing and then actively close the ribs to come back down. Don't just give in to gravity, make the front body work. Shoulder blades slide down first, then elevate, finding the upper back muscles, then continue pushing your, put some pressure into the roller so that it comes toward you and helps facilitate that extension. Actively close and lower back down. This is just a really nice, Slow motion swan dive. Feels really nice if you're getting all the nooks and crannies of your, of your vertebra column. And then close the ribs on your way back down. So just a few more here. Exhale to lift. Get that nice stretch. Open the front body from sternum to pubic bone. One last. Only come up to your degree. You don't just want to dump everything into the low back. Make the entire spine open here. One last. Floating up and then release back down. Now this time, you're going to hold onto the roller. We're going to float the upper and the lower body up together. So again, put a little pressure into the pubic bone so not everything's dumping into your low back. Take a breath in and exhale. Hover, holding onto the roller or not, it's your choice. And then lower back down. Use the breath, floating up, hovering effortlessly away from the mat, and then release back down. Use the breath here. Exhale, lift, and release. Again, using the breath. Exhale. Really stabilizing, firing all those muscles in the posterior chain. We're going to come up on this next one and hold. 
and out. Flutter, kick the legs in opposition. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. Inhale, two, four, five, and exhale, two, three, four, five. Two more sets. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Last one. Exhale, two, three, four, and five. Pause, lower back down. Set the roller aside and just push back into what we call a little shell stretch. So anytime you've done any sort of big extension work, you always want to balance with flexion work. So from head to tail and keeping the abs really pulled in and braced, and then you're curling the spine, always finding that balance after you've extended. And now we'll take the roller to the end of your mat. Your feet are gonna rest on top. Right, like so. And usually we're gonna use this to do some hip rolls and some bridging. Uh, my hamstrings right away will always sing to me <laughs> on the first few repetitions here. So yours might do that too, and that's okay. It'll hopefully work itself out. So arms are gonna be long at your sides. You wanna start first by shortening that space between hips and ribs to flatten the low back into the roller, then push the soles of the feet into the roller as you bridge the spine away from the mat. Take a breath in. Woo! Yay! There's that cramp, that very first one. Soften at the base of the throat and melt back down one vertebra at a time. Take a breath in. Curl through the tail. Peel it up. Take a breath in. Soften. Melt back down one vertebra at a time and release. Take a breath in, compress the low abs, shortening the space between ribs and hips. Curl through the tail to lift. Take a breath, soften, roll it back down and release. Again, curling through the tail, peeling it up. This time stay lifted here. Now you're gonna push the roller away slightly. It's gonna come toward your heels and then pull it back in. Push it away slightly, pull it back in. So it's a real short range of motion, little hamstring curl. Itty bitty movement, not very big at all. Last two, one, lower back down. Stretch your legs out if you'd like. If you need to for a moment like I do, kind of windshield wiper side to side. Shake out the muscle belly and the back of the leg. And then we'll bring it back in again. This time a little single leg variation to challenge that overall stability through the center. Curl through the tail, peeling it up. Stay lifted here. Bring one knee into tabletop with control. Set back down. Anchor the foot into the roller. Bring the other leg up to tabletop and down. Transitioning here from side to side. Working to keep your core as quiet as possible against the movement of the legs. Use the breath. Work that stability. Keep the core as quiet as you can through those transitions. That's really challenging. One more time each side. And one last. Pause here, take a breath, soften, and again, roll it back down. And now, we'll take the roller, and it's gonna come up kind of to your mid-back, just below your shoulder blade. So it's kind of helping you facilitate this nice little reclined position here. So for those of you that are working on the, the strength in your upper abs and in your neck for the 100, this is a really nice way to stay propped up so that your upper body uh, is not the first thing to fatigue. So the, the hundred, your arms are gonna be out here at your hip height and you're pumping the arms 
with intention, with resistance. So you're squeezing the armpits, getting those lats to fire, so your elbows are soft. You're not just slapping that water through the palms. It happens from the shoulder joint, up and down. Tuck the tail to your degree as much as you can to get that curl through the low abdominals and the lumbar spine. Bring the knees up to tabletop. They can stay right here if you need, or you can extend the legs to a high V, and we're pumping the arms. Two, three, four, five, and exhale two, four, five. Inhale two, exhale two. Inhale two, exhale two. Inhale two, and exhale two. Inhale two, exhale two. Add the legs lower and lift. This is just an option. Inhale two, three, four, five, and exhale two, three, four, five. Inhale two, four, five, and exhale two, three, four, five. You could also stretch them long, four, five, and pull back in, four, five. Reaching long, two, pull back in. So any of those will work. Let's hold here, inhale, and release down. So those are just little variations that you can add in to the 100. So now we'll move on to a nice series, a sequential series that adds a ton of endurance and stamina. The first one is your single leg stretch into obliques. It gets a little tricky as we start moving into the obliques on the roller. So at any time you feel like you need to readjust it, do so. So we'll start first again, contract, compress the low abs, knees to tabletop, reach one leg out long, inhale, exhale, and switch. And your breath work could be inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, last set, exhale, exhale. Hold, hands to the head, rotate to one side. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Kind of, whoop, whoop, lost my roller. Think about as you rotate, kind of grabbing with your shoulder blade back over the roller and that'll kind of help keep it into position. Last set, back to center and pause. That one's not exactly perfect, I don't love it, but you get the idea. Okay, on this next one is your double leg stretch. So your knees again back to tabletop. Hands are gonna be starting here at the knees. You start by first bending the elbows, stretch arms and legs out long, exhale, inhale around. Exhale, inhale around. Exhale, reach. Really pull in the pit of the abs. Exhale, reach, and around. Exhale, reach, and around. Exhale, reach, and around. Last two times, reach around and reach. Pause here, go ahead and rest the knees down. If you're like me and your hip flexors get super tight, then give yourself a minute to stretch and let them open so that you can release some of that tension so you don't want to stay gripped the whole time. Okay, on this next one is the scissors. I'm gonna bring the knees again back to tabletop. Stretch them to your degree, opening up the back of the leg. One leg goes away from you, you do a little pulse, pulse. Inhale, switch, exhale, pulse, pulse.
The next exercise here we're going to do is actually called the roll over. And you're going to start with lifting your hips so that the roller is underneath your sacrum. So this is a really nice place uh, if getting the legs up and overhead is something that's just been really, really difficult for you. This is a really great place um, to get that lift up and off so that you can do the full variation. And this just feels really nice too. So again, compress the low abs, bring one knee and then the other knee to your tabletop position. You're gonna exhale the legs out to a 45 degree angle. You'll start to hinge the legs here and then exhale, take them overhead. If you can touch the floor behind you, try that. I'm not able to do that today because I'm pretty tight, that's okay. Separate the legs hip width apart, flex the feet and control the descent back down to the roller. The legs come out again back to that 45, connect the legs together. Inhale, start the hinge, exhale overhead. Separate hip width, flex the feet, compress the low abs, let the roller catch you on your way back down. Bring the legs again back together. Start your hinge, exhale, overhead, separate, flex the feet, control again, let the roller catch you so that you have that descent. This time, leave the legs hip width apart. Start the hinge. Exhale overhead, bring the inner thighs together, and again, control the return back down out to your 45. Separate again just to hip height. Control the legs overhead, connect the inner thighs, and lower back down with control. We're going to do that one more time. Separate the legs, start the hinge. Exhale, connect the inner thighs. Again, control it back down. Here's another great place to do the scissors. So one leg is opening, so you really get that nice hip flexor stretch, and you do a little pulse, pulse action here. Pulse, pulse. So really opening up the hip flexor and the hamstring. Reach, 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 reach. This just is a Great way to stretch your hips, all the little nooks and crannies, the hip flexors and the hamstrings. And reach, 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 reach. And we're going to take this now right into the bicycle. So the leg that's away from you, bend. If your toe grazes the floor, great. And then extend. And reach. Really mobilizing the hips the knees, and then if you can add in that flexion of the ankle joint as well, really opening, like you're riding that imaginary bicycle. On this next one, pause and reverse it. Dip the toe down, flex, and come up. Still a lot of work going on in the low abs here. Trying to stay parallel to the best of your ability through the legs. That's not my norm. My legs love to turn out. And then one more time, we'll bring the legs back together. Straight up to the ceiling. Take a breath in and exhale. Compress the abs as the legs lower. And then lift them back up. Only lower the legs as deeply as you can keep that low ab compression. If the belly starts to pop forward, then you know you've gone too far. Exhale, lift, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Last two times. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. One last time. And then this is just a really nice inner thigh stretch. If you let the legs open directly out to the sides, Stay parallel at first, and then turn out. And then back to parallel, 
and turned out. Notice when you come to parallel, your legs will probably narrow a little bit. And as you turn out, the legs open a little bit wider. Just noticing those biomechanics, your nerdy leg can eat you like that. Just letting the head of that femur bone rotate around the nooks and crannies of your acetabulum. One more time. Deepen in the belly. We'll float the legs back up. Now, just one leg at a time. Woo! Opens up to the side and then back up center. And open. You're trying not to let the leg that's staying to the ceiling counterbalance. Working really hard to keep that leg vertical and not counter out to the side to keep that stability. Moving side to side. Take your time. Lots of work happening here in the obliques. A couple more. Feels a bit like a metronome with the legs moving side to side. One last. And bring the knees back up. Bending, you can set the feet down. Put pressure into the soles of the feet to lift the hips and the roller comes out and then lower back down one vertebra at a time. So the one thing that you always want to look for in a Pilates class is that you've mobilized your spine, you've done a lot of flexion, extension, rotation, and lateral flexion. So this particular class, we didn't do a lot of rotation or lateral flexion. So we'll take some time here at the end just to move through those ranges of motion. So we'll inhale the arms up and then opposite hand to opposite knee, back hand is behind the small of your back to lift you up into space and then take it into a nice little rotation, looking over that back shoulder. Unwind, floating the arms all the way back up. Opposite hand to opposite shoulder. Use that back arm as a little kickstand to grow tall and then look over again that back shoulder. Again, one more time each side. Inhale to lift up. Exhale. Take it into your deepest rotation. Hold it there for a second. And now look over the opposite shoulder. Really getting that nice, great big spiral position. Gently unwind. Again, arms up, opposite shoulder. Take it to your greatest degree of rotation or spiral initially, and then look over the opposite shoulder. Gently unwind. This time, arms up, and then you're gonna take it over into a side bend. So you're gonna push into the floor and then actively curve through the spine. So it's a lift up, and then C-curve over. So you're pushing the side body up into space, not just giving into gravity over to the side. Again, inhale, pushing into the mat, and then giving yourself that side curve. And again, this time back to the first side, lifting up and then into your C-curve. Now take the chest, square it off to the mat as much as you can. You may feel this a lot in the low back, in the QL, or the upper traps, depending on where you tend to hold your tension. Back to the side, all the way back up. Again, into that side bend. Square the chest off toward the mat. Back to the side all the way back up to sit nice, straight, and tall. Thank you again so much for joining me today. Again, my name is Chandler Moore Sanders, and I am with Moore Wellness Studio. Uh, please like and subscribe and all that YouTube business. I'm still kind of new at this and trying to figure out 
how to navigate the YouTube world and social media. So that would help me out. And thank you again so much. Have a great rest of your day.